There are three watercolor categories in Painter. Digital watercolor is the original one, and it is the simplest. We also have a category called real watercolor that has more complex variants. And finally, watercolor, which is the most sophisticated of all. And we'll begin with a project using the basic digital watercolor. And I will open a custom palette with digital watercolor variants. Let me show you what these look like. New Simple Water looks like that. Incidentally, I have chosen a French watercolor paper from the Paper Texture Library. Let's look at Round Water Blender. And notice that the edge of this stroke has a buildup of pigment. That's called wet fringe, and that's quite convincing as a watercolor effect. We're also seeing on the edges of this Round Water Blender stroke some of that paper texture. Here's Coarse Mop Brush. Fine tip water is going to enable you to make some very fine strokes, and this stroke is based on pressure, so you can, with light pressure, make some very thin strokes. Wash brush looks like that. Some of these are quite similar to the others. Wash brush and coarse mop brush, I think, look quite similar. It looks like the coarse mop has a bit more of a texture showing. And finally, gentle wet eraser, which will enable you to lighten an area either very subtly, or if you go over it, you can virtually eliminate the color. In order to imitate natural media, it's a good idea not to use the eraser too much because erasing is really not a watercolor technique. I'm going to eliminate all those strokes and I'm going to open a source image called Sunflowers and show you a watercolor painting that I did using that image. Let's go back to the working files and images, projects, and go down to watercolor. It is called Sunflower WC for watercolor. And so I think you can see that it was based on the photo. So let's begin to recreate this. It won't be exactly this way, and I won't attempt to recreate it exactly, but I just wanted to show you the result of my earlier effort. So in order to simply get the placement of the items down, I'm going to create a quick clone so that now we can have our tracing paper set up with the opacity that we want. And then we can open the source image once again as a reference image. So let's move that into position here and open Sunflowers 2 in that spot. So now we can use that for sampling color once we begin. And let's begin with a medium orange. And I'll choose the coarse mop brush to get some of the basic areas of color established. As usual, you want to work from large areas to small areas. I'll switch to a green and go in there with my coarse mop brush. Let's see how that looks without tracing paper. Nothing much happening there, but we are at least getting the placement of the main shapes and colors down. Let's get the interior dark areas going and also some of the darker green areas. And I think if I look at this once again, I'm going to want to make some simple water shapes. That's kind of harsh. It's a good idea to work from light to dark when you're working in watercolor. So I think I'll put off getting too dark. Maybe I can place a medium dark in there. That's not too bad. And down in that place. And then possibly with the blender, let's see what happens when I do a little bit of a blend. Well, that's kind of interesting. I'm getting some excellent merges there. So let's try doing a little bit of the vase. So I'll turn the opacity down so I can see more of the image. And I'll use this blue to create a wash showing the vase. Let's see how that looks without tracing paper. We're going to have to rely less and less on tracing paper, and I think we might as well start now. So I've got my basic shapes and colors in there. I'm going to do an iterative save. I'll call it 
sunflower, and it's a RIF file, so let's put it in there as a RIF image. And now I think I'll do some simple water, get some more of these colors in there. I may already be ready for the fine tip to put in some of these petals. And I can go in for some darker petals. This flower up here is pretty dark, and then there's some dark petals over here. And I want to get some of the lighter green in there. Let's get a very light green for some of these areas, and we want to get some of that in the vase, but there's also some dark green as well. So we need to get some variation, and I think I might be ready for a darker area inside this flower and inside this flower, and this one as well. Possibly a little bit over here and over here. And let's see what that blender is going to do for us using not the dark color, but I'm going to select white as my color so that I'm not going to be adding color. I'm just going to be kind of spreading color around. And since it's called a blender, I think I'll enhance what I'm doing with that blender. Let's get some more variation in the petal colors. And I'll stick with the fine tip in this case, get that really bright yellow. Looks like I'm able to make that happen, even though in real life you will be encouraged to work from light to dark. It looks like we're able to lighten some of these colors, and that is being very helpful for our purposes here. So very rich kind of a red. We want to go for some variation here in as much as we can. And I think I am going to try to get a little bit more of a sharp focus by sticking with my fine tip water and getting in some of the underside of the flowers here. That's a lighter green. Let's make that a lighter green and then some lighter green over here and down into the water. I want to develop the vase of water a little bit more and I think I might need to use my gentle eraser to create that shape and also to establish those highlights. In real life watercolor you would make an effort to simply avoid painting on the highlight parts but it's nice to know that you can in fact erase or in traditional techniques you can actually re-wet, re-moisten an area and then lift color from your paper. So we're getting to a point where it's pretty close I think and I'm just going to attend to some of the area up at the top here because I would like to make some of these petals a little bit pointier and sticking out so I want to get rid of that blob of color that we started with. It's nice to know that I can accomplish that with digital watercolor. And I'll go in again with some lighter, maybe not quite that light, but this kind of stroke for some of these petals. And I'm thinking we are in pretty good shape here. Let's just define the center a bit more. Ready to get a little bit darker in there and let the petals stay in sharp focus as well. I think we can do just a little more with that and then get some more green in there. A little bit more green in here. I wonder if I can make the water look somewhat more realistic or get the edge of that. I don't think that was a good choice there. I'm going to use a lighter blue that I can just pick up from the painting and that is going to be pretty close. Let's put in a kind of a shadow at the bottom. Let's use this blue for the shadow down there and I'll use my wash brush to put in a shadow at the bottom. And then the fine tip water with a little bit darker blue to define the bottom of that vase and the shape at this point also. So I think this is just about ready. I'm going to use the blender once again to just soften that a little bit. And that is pretty good.
So give this a try. Use this photo of sunflowers as a reference image and see what you can accomplish using the digital watercolor variants.